So, picture this. The date is 26th June 2010, and France have just been knocked out in the World Cup group stage after scoring just one goal and failing to win a single game. That right there was one of the darkest periods in French football history. And at that time, if you'd walked into a bar and told a random French football fan that they would be world champions in eight years, they would have laughed in your face and probably had you thrown out of the bar. But they did become world champions eight years later, and much of that was thanks to a man named Didier Deschamps. But how the hell did he do it? How could he take that horrible-looking side who finished last in their group and turn them into the most dangerous nation in the world of football? Well, ladies and gentlemen, this is the story of how Didier Deschamps transformed France into world champions. Let's start from the beginning. You see, the truth is that France had been on a decline since the turn of the century. They won the World Cup in 98 and the Euros in 2000. But after Didier Deschamps captained the nation to those huge successes, it was downhill from there. In the 2002 World Cup, they got knocked out in the group stage after finishing last in a group with Denmark, Senegal and Uruguay failing to score a single goal or tournament. In retrospect, it's easy to just chalk that up to the World Cup winner's curse. There's a common superstition in international football that when you win the World Cup, you're likely to do badly in the next tournament. It also happened with Spain in 2014 and Germany in 2018. But when France got knocked out in the second round of the Euro 2004 as well, it became obvious that there was a bigger issue. And that issue quickly became worse, because shortly after they got knocked out, their talisman Zinedine Zidane announced that he'd be retiring from international football. And that was just the first of a whole round of blows, as more legends went on to retire after Zidane, including Liliane Thuram, Claude Makelele, Bichente Lizarazu and Marcel Desailly. Essentially, the core of that successful team was ripped apart, so unsurprisingly, Les Bleus began to suffer. It was so bad that they were facing the possibility of missing out on World Cup qualification for the first time in over a decade. So, Raymond Domenech, who was the head coach at the time, had to beg Zidane to come back out of retirement, because the France national team certainly needed a saviour. Zidane agreed to return for one last dance, and it turned out to be one of the biggest carry jobs we've ever seen. To be fair, he was joined by Makalele and Thuram, both of whom also came out of retirement. And together, they dragged France from fourth in their World Cup qualifying group to first. Now, I know you probably remember France's 2006 World Cup pretty fondly. They got to the final, so all must have been great, right? Well, wrong. A closer look at the tournament exposes the rot that was present in the France senior team at the time. They drew their opening two games against Switzerland and South Korea. Only a scrappy 2-0 win against Togo guaranteed them passage into the knockout stages, where they were lifted by individual brilliance. Thierry Henry's goal helped them get past Brazil, and Zinedine Zidane's goal helped them get past Portugal. Then, in the final, one could argue that they were on course to win the whole thing if their captain had not buried his head in the torso of an opponent and earned himself a red card. That was the worst kind of farewell Zidane could have asked for. He lost his head there, almost literally, and without him, France just weren't able to beat Italy on penalties. After 2006, the OGs retired for good, and once again, France were exposed. They finished bottom of the group at Euro 2008 after failing to win a single game and scoring just one goal all tournament. They also struggled in the 2010 World Cup qualifiers, finishing behind Serbia in their group and having to go through the playoffs where we saw the infamous Thierry Henry hand of God assist against the Republic of Ireland. France was so bad that they had to cheat to qualify for the World Cup. And perhaps it would have been better if they didn't qualify at all, because it was there in South Africa, with the whole world watching, that the France national team completely imploded and exploded. We saw Henri get relegated to the bench, and Elka sent home mid-tournament after reportedly cursing the coach out, and the rest of the team protested by refusing to train. All of this culminated in an embarrassing tournament altogether. France scored just one goal, and failed to win a single game in a group that had Uruguay, South Africa, and Mexico. That was the last straw. The French Football Federation had seen enough, so they sacked Dominic and replaced him with Laurent Blanc who was only able to lead France to the quarter-final of Euro 2012 before he stepped away from the job. At this time, becoming coach of the France national team wasn't exactly the most exciting job. 
There was a lot of pressure, but just not enough momentum to get the team going, especially in major tournaments. So, it was brave of the former captain Didier Deschamps to take the job where not many would have. He had a very good CV at the time. He memorably led Monaco to the Champions League final in 2004, where he was undone by Jose Mourinho, one of the greatest football managers of all time. He also led Juventus back to the Serie A in 2007, and then went on to win Marseille their first League One title in 18 years, and helped them reach the quarter-final of the Champions League for the first time in 19 years. Before he became the coach of Marseille, the club hadn't won a trophy for 17 years. In three years as a coach there, he won six trophies. So yes, he was a good coach, and could have gone anywhere he wanted at the time. Even Juventus wanted him back, but he chose the most difficult job, France. He was one of the most loved figures in France for sure, after having captained the country to their first ever World Cup success and their second ever Euro victory. But taking this job meant that he was putting his legacy on the line. If he failed, he could very quickly go from being loved to being hated. But he wasn't scared. Why? Because the man had a plan. His first task was to qualify for the 2014 World Cup, and despite being drawn in the same group as European and world champion Spain, he managed to secure that World Cup ticket pretty comfortably. He then went on to lead France to the quarterfinals in his first World Cup campaign as coach. They were knocked out by eventual champions Germany, but there were positive signs all around and good reasons to hope. First. France's Paul Pogba was named best young player of the tournament, and that signaled the beginning of a new generation of super-talented French players coming to the big stage. Academies and feeders clubs all around the country were spawning some brilliant talents. The country had invested in these academies in the 90s and 2000s, and that investment started to yield returns in the 2010s. AS Bondi produced Kylian Mbappe and William Saliba. Le Havre produced Paul Pogba, Dimitri Payet, Benjamin Mendy, and even Riyad Mahrez, who went on to represent Algeria at the international level. And you have the Clairefontaine Academy, who will also take some credit from Mbappe, as well as Blaise Matidi, Alphonse Achiola, and even Rafael Guerrero, who decided to represent Portugal on the international stage. Deschamps was able to assemble these talented youngsters and pair them up with experienced players to achieve a perfect balance and it didn't take long for us to see significant progress. In Euro 2016, France had their revenge on Germany after the 2014 World Cup by knocking them out in the semi-finals and booking themselves a place in a major final for the first time in 16 years. But unfortunately, they were beaten by a long-range shot from Edda in extra time of the final against Portugal. Not much they could have done about that one, to be honest. But once again, despite having not won a trophy, French fans had reason to believe. Their players dominated the awards. Griezmann won both the Golden Boot for most goals scored and the Golden Ball for player of the tournament. Olivier Giroud won the Bronze Boot, while Kingsley Goman finished second to Renato Sanchez in the rankings for best young player of the tournament. Another sign that better days were ahead was Deschamps coaching style. He's known to always prioritize balance with his team, while also giving his creative players the freedom to express themselves on the pitch. He creates the most conducive environment for his players, which makes them super comfortable. And when good players are comfortable, they play their best football. That's why you see that French players are usually super excited to leave their clubs and go on international breaks. The vibes are always great there. It's sort of like Carlo Ancelotti's Real Madrid, which people have nicknamed Friendship FC because of the brotherly atmosphere the coach creates in the dressing room. This level of expert management is almost certain to yield results, especially in international football where tournaments are short and a lack of team synergy can be very disastrous. You know, just like we saw with France in 2010. All of this made fans believe, but if all that wasn't enough reason to believe, not long after the 2016 Euros, a certain kid rose from nowhere. His name? Kylian Mbappe. He broke out in the 2016-17 season as an 18-year-old, winning the League One with Monaco and leading them to the semi-final of the Champions League. Immediately, he was brought into the France senior team. He was a kid, but he'd shown that he was certainly ready for the big stages. Didier Deschamps, adding the best wonder kid in the world to that already good-looking side, was like Professor Utonium adding Chemical X to sugar, spice, and everything nice. 
The only difference was that the France squad that was created turned out to be much deadlier than the Powerpuff Girls. They blew everyone away in the 2018 World Cup qualifiers, and in Mbappe's second World Cup game, he scored the winning goal to show that he was ready to own this competition. That goal also made him France's youngest ever goal scorer in a World Cup game. Mbappe would also go on to score a brace against Lionel Messi's Argentina in the round of 16, to become the first teenager to score two goals in a World Cup match since Pele did it 60 years prior. He would also score in the final against Croatia, to become only the second teenager to ever score in a World Cup final, again after Pele. But it wasn't the Mbappe show. Oh, not at all. Antoine Griezmann scored four goals and provided two assists to finish with the silver boot and the bronze ball. Rafael Varane was brilliant all through and earned himself a place in the team of the tournament. Benjamin Pavard scored the goal of the tournament against Argentina. Samuel Umtiti scored the goal which sent France to the final. And there was also Paul Pogba and N'Golo Kante who ran the midfield together. Like I said earlier, unlike Deschamps, it was about balance and cohesion with freedom given to the creative and expressive players. That friendliness and cohesion in the squad was very evident in the celebrations of that World Cup victory in 2018. The vibes were just so pure, and you could tell that it was just a reflection of what the dressing room looked like. And, I'll be honest, Didier Deschamps' ball isn't always the most aesthetically pleasing. He didn't win the World Cup like Spain did in 2010, or even like Germany did in 2014, but his style was very effective nonetheless. And in Euro 2020, it became obvious that his management style was heavily dependent on having a harmonious dressing room. And when that goes wrong, everything comes crashing down. When it comes to individual talents, France's Euro 2020 squad was probably the best French squad since 2006. They had Mbappe, Benzema, Griezmann, Conte, Pogba, Giroud, Varane, and a host of other super talents scattered across different positions on the pitch. But that remains the worst tournament performance since Deschamps took over. Why? Because they lacked that harmony in the squad. Benzema and Giroud were not the best of friends, and the former Real Madrid man even later fell out with the coach and a couple of other players. This beef even extended to the parents of the players, with Rabiot's mum reportedly having a go at Mbappe's dad and Pogba's family after the team crashed out of the round of 16 on penalties at the hands of Switzerland. But Deschamps was able to get his team of friends back together, and they threatened to make history in 2022 by becoming the first team in the 21st century to successfully defend the World Cup trophy. In Qatar 2022, they became the first team to reach back-to-back -back World Cup finals since Brazil in 2002, and Mbappe went on to make history by becoming the first player to score a hat-trick in a World Cup final since Jeff Hurst in 1966. He also became the player with the most goals scored in World Cup finals since the start of the competition in 1930. Unfortunately, all that wasn't enough to secure them the trophy. They were beaten on penalties by Lionel Messi's Argentina in what was regarded by many as one of the most exciting finals ever. So despite the disappointing end, it was still a very successful tournament for Le Bleu, and it highlighted how far they'd come. First, they broke the World Cup winner's curse which they'd fallen to in 2002. But this time around, they reached the final yet again. And why it was more impressive was because Deschamps showed that he was able to do it with different sets of players. Only four players who started in the 2018 World Cup also started in the 2022 World Cup. They'd lost vital players like Conte, Pogba, and Lucas Hernandez to injuries, but they still managed to terrorize the world again. That right there is a testament to the brilliance of the coach. How Didier Deschamps was able to take the worst French team in years and transform them into Euro finalists in four years and world champions in six is an insane achievement, and that probably puts him up there as perhaps the greatest coach to have ever led the France national team. In your opinion, is he France's greatest ever coach? Also, do you think he can win yet another World Cup before he steps aside? Tell us in the comments and don't forget to like the video.